So we join here where we have a subset of data, 20 searches for say a marketplace, and we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how we can run through Foundry an LLM in order to identify the name of the brand, if any are mentioned, as well as the item that is being purchased. And we can also then pass this through to a model experiment example to compare against ground truth. So what we can do is the first thing we need to do is set up an ontology. Um, to do this, we can navigate the schema tab on the left, uh, making sure to have ontologies selected. And we'll see a list of all the ontologies that we've created previously. We'll go ahead and create a new one. And because we're dealing with text data, we can go ahead and select text here. But you can see the various data types that we do support. So if we just say search, let's um, name this something appropriate. And we'll add objects in here. So we can name org and we'll see we're looking for the entity. And we could say uh, product if we wanted. We can keep it simple at that and we can go ahead and create this ontology. Now navigating back, we can either filter straight to our data set or we can filter at the top based on various attributes. Let's go ahead and navigate to that data set that we were just looking at a minute ago. So marketplace from entities, um, and we can select all of these. Click predict with model foundry in the top right and you'll be served up various foundation models that we have as standard within label box to support this. Additionally, we can also deploy custom models. So if you have ensemble models or various uh, rules-based um, named entities, we can work with you to deploy this within label box and you could run all of that functionality directly from within the custom tab. However, in this case, let's go ahead and select foundation model and we'll go with GPT. Next, let's select the ontology that we've created. And by standard default, we will predict at label box a appropriate prompt that basically asks for the response. Um, we can tweak this as required. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a prompt that I have created. So here I have tweaked it so that we can give details if of interest to better steer our LLM. Here I've defined what org is, it's either the company or brand name mentioned, and product is the product that's being searched. And in case of uh, ensuring that the response to the returns in the appropriate format, we can add something like that at the bottom to return the results in a dictionary format. We then have the option, um, as you see on the right hand side, we can generate previews for this to make sure that we have the appropriate model performance. If of interest, we can also generate some examples. So this is to support few shot learning where you could provide examples of, for example, input text and the expected output annotations for those. However, as we can see, we're getting pretty good performance regardless. There are various other parameters that you can tweak at the bottom. Um, and once we're comfortable that we're getting the performance we want, we may wish to go ahead and save this as an app for repeatability. Show you briefly the advantage of an app is it saves all the configurations that we have in front of us. So next time if I go back, having selected my data, and I can select apps, I can see the NER app that I created a moment ago. And as we'll see, it has stored the prompt and any other configurations that we've applied. We're now in a position to go ahead, name this model, run something appropriate, and submit it for a full run. We can wait a few moments, check in the progress if required in the left hand side under the notifications tab. Now that our model run is complete, we can navigate to the catalog view where we will automatically filter at the top for that model run. And we can observe each data row with the associated predictions around org and product. We can now extract this easily by going to the model run itself, identifying the model, making sure that we have the right model run and we can go ahead and select that model ID. Having copied our model ID, we can paste it in this chunk of code here, and we can leverage Labelbox's API in a few lines of code to extract our responses as a JSON. JSON will contain various attributes about our data row, such as the unique identifier, the original text in our query, 
as well as, as we'll see here, the entities that have been identified. So we can see product and we see the start and end characters. We can now extract this as you would with the standard JSON to leverage the model predictions in whatever way we want within our environment. The alternative is we now have these. We may wish to pass this to an annotate project or say human evaluation or review and refinement. To do so, let's set up a new annotate project. Name it something model assisted labeling, for example. Let's go ahead, add the ontology that we created a short while ago. And now that our annotate project is configured, we can navigate back to our model run to identify the output. As we see here, we can select all of these and we can send these to annotate. We'll include our model predictions, making sure to select the correct model run here. And assuming that we have the same ontology versus the ontology used for our model run, we'll get a green tick to indicate that we have in fact mapped. That is to say the outputs predicted match the ontology that's assigned to that project. In the event that you have a different naming convention, you can manually edit the mapping as required. However, what we're going to do is we're going to send this to initial review so that we can have a reviewer look over these. We can click submit. We can navigate back to that project. Wait a few moments and refresh if required. Going to the workflow, we can see that those 20 data rows have now been batched in for review and we can have a human go in and start reviewing those as required. They either have the option to approve in this case it all seems to be working as appropriate in this case we might wish to edit because it's not captured the wireless mouse and we can save that approve that and move on. We can do so until we've reached the end of our batch data. After appropriate reviewing and validating, we'll have all of our data rows sitting within done. Now navigating back to our LLM output, we may wish to go ahead and evaluate our LLM performance. To do so, we can evaluate the performance versus a ground truth. For the purpose of this short demo, we can use the refined outputs as our ground truth, and we can pass these to what we refer to as a model experiment. So let's go ahead and set that up. If I go to model, I can go ahead and create an experiment here. Let's name it something appropriate. Now I want to find the ontology of relevance. And I can select that project for which I have 20 data rows sitting and done. This will form my ground truth. Create a new model run where we can see that the label box handles the train validate and test bits for us. We can name it something appropriate, model run one, and we can click create. We'll now see within our data set, as indicated by the green, the ground truth annotations. These are those that have been viewed and validated by our users. For example, we see the one that we edited there to identify the product, as well as Apple being identified as the brand. We now have our ground truth and we can navigate back to our Python SDK in order to leverage the extracted model run outputs from our GPT LLM, and we can upload those using the SDK to compare against our ground truth. Once we establish our model experiment with the ground truth annotations being those that have been 
reviewed and refined by labelers, we can go ahead, copy the model run ID and navigate to our SDK. We have our GPT annotations above and we can iterate through those GPT annotations each time extracting the start and end location of our entities as well as the names, that is whether or not it's an org or a product and we can construct our payload. We can then easily execute the upload using these lines of code where we simply paste the model experiment ID into this field to identify the right model experiment to upload. We've also identified each data row in turn and having executed this, we can navigate back to our model experiment page. Once back in the model experiment page, we can navigate to each data row to see the ground truth annotations versus our predictions to evaluate how our model is doing. We can then navigate to the metrics tab where we can see the precision, recall, F1 and interception over union. And as we'll see here, we have fairly decent model performance because we only made a few tweaks through our human evaluation. Obviously, you might see different performance in cases where your ground truth differs drastically from model predictions. We also have the ability to navigate to edge cases such as false positives. And for example, this is the one that we edited live in this demo. We can see that the first is our ground truth, which is identified wireless mouse as a product. We have not identified this through our LLM run. So hopefully it gives you an idea for how you can start to narrow down onto edge cases, surface these, and then begin to identify performance 